I'm your 3D CG guru, Nathaniel Albright, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how we can animate objects in the viewport and have tangent handles, even though there are not tangent handles for the trajectory tools inside of Cascader. So I'm going to go up to the commands, go to add and choose sphere. Once I have the sphere in my scene, you'll notice I cannot select it in the viewport. If you ever want to select meshes from the viewport, you actually have to go in and enable the kind of mesh mode, and then we can select that object. However, for us, you can also just click on the sphere over here in the outliner, even if you're not actually in uh, mesh selection mode, we can just go here and grab this. So I'm going to go to my front view, uh, and I'm going to go to orthographic, and just go to the front here like this. So I'm going to go ahead and go out to frame 40, set a key, then with my key selected somewhere or in this area, I'll just do the Alt V to give this a default interpolation. Now, uh, my animation is going and not doing anything. So I need to move this through space. We're going to create a little uh, bouncy ball. Uh, I have trajectories enabled and I have my time selected. So I'm seeing some of my trajectory. The trajectory options are right up here. So I'm just going to turn that off for a moment and lift my sphere up, but I need to set a key first before I do that. There we go. Let's go ahead and select the key range and enable trajectory. So here's our trajectory and I want to move this key. So just middle click and drag without holding down shift will allow me to move the key without cloning it. Now notice that when I enable trajectory, it's going to show me just the path for whatever is selected. And if I click away, I lose that uh, visual. So what you can do is if you want to select a range, there are these little uh, marks here, the set trajectory interval. It looks like the hotkey for that. I haven't looked that one up. Okay, so just the um, backslash will turn those on and off, and the backslash can be found right above the enter key. So now I can make some adjustments if I wanted, like so. Okay, so this is our trajectory. You'll notice that we have uh, different colors, so anything that is actually keyframed is a different color dot than the neighboring objects. And if we do something like mark something as important, it'll kind of show up with this additional red uh, outline, which is great as is just some more information, the better. Okay, now, so I have this ball and the one issue I have with this bounce right now is that there is a slow in and a slow out. And I don't want this right with the bouncy ball. We want this thing. I'm going to have this kind of like launching off of the ground with a high velocity, like it's been shot out of a cannon. And then I want it coming to the ground fast. So there are no tangent handles with the Vezier uh, interpolation, but you can actually introduce your own tangent handles, if you will, simply by placing a key next to the key you want the tangent handle. So here, if I set a key and I move this out, we can say that this now acts as a tangent handle. Notice how as I move this around, the curve interpolation changes. And now I can remove any slow in by giving myself some space. Now, because of the interpolation, I do start to get some overshoot here. We could go in here if we wanted, and we could try to maybe change the interpolation type to a viscous bezier so the overshoot is not quite as strong. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as the default bezier curve. I'm going to go over here and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to just set a key and then I'm going to just pull this out so I have no slow out on my first key. So with that done, now I can actually just remove this center key altogether and this is now the animation that I have. If I wanted to make it not go so high, I would just simply need to dial back the separation of the second to last and second key on the timeline, right? So you can really think of these uh, keys next to one another as tangent handles that you add as you need them. Let's go in and now have this ball do another bounce. So I'm gonna set another key. I'll go ahead and move my sphere and I'm gonna set that interpolation. Let's grab the whole range and just enable the fixed uh, trajectory time. So now we can see, once again, this really does act as a kind of tangent handle where the path is going to pass through the key that I have on frame 40 and 
continue that path down. So obviously with a bouncing ball, this is problematic uh, because we're going to go down into the ground, which we don't want. But just like with a graph editor, if I want to break my tangents, I can just simply go up here and break my tangent like so. And then I can go over here and set this key like so. All right, so that is a quick look at how you can actually animate and deal with uh, tangents when you're translating something.